from New York City, Comedy Central presents TIG. I'm in the right place. <laughs> New York. Here I am. <laughs> oh my God. I, um, I actually live in uh, Los Angeles and um, I travel around a lot. And it seems like every time I come back home, I notice more and more women are getting fake boobs. <sighs> Meanwhile, I still haven't even gotten real ones yet. <laughs> I mean, I have boobs. They're just concave. <laughs> so much so they even kind of stick out of my back a little bit. <laughs> That's hot. I, um, I'm originally from, was born, in the Big Apple. No way, Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> Get out of here. It's very unusual. You don't run into that much. You laugh, but uh, it's very unusual. I, uh, my whole family's still down there in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Thanks for your support. <laughs> I was down there in August hanging out with my crazy redneck Aunt Sheila. We were sitting on her back porch and she put her arm around me and she was like, Tig, it's pretty outside, don't it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, Sheila, it does. Because it did. It really, really had. I went on a... Um, hardcore drinking and smoking binge. And it lasted right about nine months. And then as soon as I was born, <laughs> I was like, whew, do not go in there. <laughs> After I moved out of the house, I used to come home to visit and my mother and I would sit up till all hours of the night talking and she'd be having a cocktail and she'd say, Tig, Tell me some more stories about what you were like as a child. <laughs> I was like, all right, one more. And I think it's someone's bedtime. <laughs> this last time I was visiting, she was like, Tig, remember when you were a little boy? <laughs> I was like, vaguely. <laughs> but keep going, you've piqued my interest. <laughs> uh, here's something kind of weird. I've, uh, I've been battling SIDS my whole life. <laughs> but I've been one of the unusual cases. Mine hasn't been so sudden. It's still frightening to know I could go at any moment. I was one of those kids that finished school early by dropping out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and when I did drop out, a teacher of mine, I remember her telling me that um, a friend of hers dropped out and ended up a stripper on drugs, kind of insinuating the same thing was probably gonna happen to me. Me. I don't know, my lack of interest in algebra and American history hardly makes me want to dance topless. <laughs> in fact, I've never even danced with my shirt on. <laughs> it's not much of a dancer, I guess. I'd like to send a message out to the kids at home, actually, if I could. Um, stay in school. 
Do not drop out, because if you do, there's a chance you could end up on TV with your own uh, comedy special making. <laughs> Yeah. I have an indoor cat, and um, just wanted you guys to know that. Uh, she's never been outside. I don't even think she knows there's such an, a thing as the outdoors. I think she thinks that when I leave for the day, I'm just standing on the other side of the door for 12 hours. <laughs> I just come back inside. And when I do come back in, she's always startled. She does that sideways crab walk with her hair sticking up. I'm like, what are you doing? I own you. I bought you at the pound for $36, including shots. I saved you from death. I go sit down and relax. I think she thinks I'm just like a neighbor storing at her place. <laughs> Coming over unannounced. <laughs> uh, so it's just me and my cat hanging around the house. When I say house, I mean a one-room <laughs> that I can hardly afford. <laughs> but I, uh, I don't have a job. I mean, I, I guess I do. It's kind of ridiculous, though, what I do. I feel like I just tell jokes and money shows up. <laughs> Before I came to New York, I checked my balance, and uh, the automated teller was like, you have seven cents. <laughs> it's nice. It's the first time in my life I've had a disposable income. Uh, it's weird being a comic because it's like, at most, I work an hour a day, five days a week. And um, there's t 23 hours to kill. <laughs> and then there's some times where there's weeks on end where I don't work at all. So if it wasn't for the street sweeping signs <laughs> in my neighborhood, I would have no motivation whatsoever to get out of bed. But there I am, every Tuesday, at 6 a.m., <laughs> passively, aggressively, fighting my neighbors for the same spot <laughs> that I know I'll never get. I never do. I always end up having to park in the same place, like five blocks away. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about moving down there. <laughs> Seems to make the most sense. And if comedy doesn't work out, what am I saying? <laughs> if comedy doesn't work out. I just worked a week in South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> I think it's clear that comedy has worked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very exciting. No, I, I'm trying to come up with a backup plan because I... Uh, I don't know, I just, I'm coming up with all these TV show ideas. Um, I have one that's a reality show, you know, with all the reality TV craze, I figured I'd come up with one. Um, let me know what you think. Um, it's called uh, Incest Survivor, <laughs> Appalachia. <laughs> keep, keep an eye out for it, I think it's gonna be very popular. <laughs> that's reality TV. And then if that doesn't fly, I know the, the uh, networks are very excited about inappropriately touched by an angel. <laughs> uh, I was at a party and this guy was hitting on me. But he was hitting on me with the most uh, boring questions. One of them was, um, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? And I was like, <laughs> Anywhere? <laughs> and he was like, anywhere. And I was like, um, to the other side of the room. <laughs> and 
Now please, get out of the way of a woman in her dream. Uh, I, um, at that same party, I was, um, I met this doctor that was telling me about that whole phenomenon of um, people putting things in parts of their body for pleasure and ending up getting them stuck. <laughs> things like light bulbs. <laughs> and I've heard about this, but it wasn't until this particular conversation that it dawned on me how long you gotta be trying to get that out of your ass before you go for help? It's gotta be hours, if not days. Like, I don't imagine you're just like, Oh, man. Light bulb won't come out of my ass. <laughs> Shoot. Maybe I'll give the neighbors a call, see if they'll swing by. Like, I imagine you want to involve as few people as possible. You probably don't just pick up the phone real quick and go, Chris, man, it's Jim. Listen. A light bulb crammed up my ass. <laughs> yes, again. <laughs> I was wondering if you could run me by the ER. Yeah, whenever's good for you. In fact, I'm going to go outside now and wait for you on my hands and knees. <laughs> you can't drive yourself. Not comfortably. <laughs> and it's like, you get to the ER, probably scrambling for stories. You can't just go in and tell the truth, even though they know that you know, that they know. Everybody knows what's going on. You can't just tell the truth. Probably like, oh God, let's see. I was sitting on this light bulb. <laughs> no. You know what? The kids leave things out all the time. I'm surprised this didn't happen any sooner. Okay, seriously? My ass is afraid of the dark. I was talking to this friend of mine that I grew up with in Houston, and um, she told me she just got her daughter Barbie's friend, wheelchair Becky. <laughs> it's a real doll. She got it for her because she wanted to show her that people in wheelchairs are just like everybody else. And if that's a lesson to be learned, then why in the doll just called Becky? <laughs> Wheelchair Becky just seems like good old-fashioned name-calling to me. <laughs> I think that my friend would be quite disapproving if her daughter learned from the lesson and came home one day and asked if Neck Brace Nikki could come over and play. <laughs> It's just so hard for me to accept the fact that Mattel would okay the name of this product to help teach tolerance and open minds. Like maybe some more dolls are gonna come out. Like Black Byron. <laughs> Chinese Charlie. Faggy Frank. Big old Dikey Darlene. 
These are not Barbie's friends. She would never hang out with these people. She's a snob. You think Barbie's gonna spend time with Byron for Kwanzaa? Or you think she's gonna take the time to strap Becky's wheelchair to the back of her pink Corvette? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Becky's gonna be stranded on the sidewalk <laughs> waiting for big old Dikey Darlene to swing by. <laughs> Pick her ass up. That's a hot lesbian couple. <laughs> Big butchy woman wheeling another woman around. Uh, oh yeah. After this one show, this woman came up to me and she was like, um, for your information, the doll's name is not Wheelchair Becky. They changed it to share a smile, Becky. <laughs> That's worse. There's an entire sentence placed before the doll's name to help her blend in. Why not just call her, please treat me as an equal, Becky. And no one will know. <laughs> Wheelchair Becky. Wheelchair not included. <laughs> On my flight out here, I was, um, was flipping through Sky Mall. <laughs> it's that in flight shopping publication. They have a lot of really great ideas but they're all very expensive. <laughs> like one of the things in there is this toaster that toasts hot dogs and hot dog buns specifically. <laughs> it just seems like the kind of person eating that many hot dogs <laughs> in their diet probably ain't gonna have that kind of cash to kick down. They're not even on that flight. <laughs> Another thing in there is um, safety man. And what he is is this inflatable man that people buy to place in the front window of their house. <laughs> or passenger seat of their car to avoid being attacked. And I don't think someone seeing an inflated man in my car <laughs> is gonna keep him from attacking me. <laughs> I think when they see me crouch down next to my car in the parking lot, pulling safety man from the tote bag that he comes in <laughs> and blowing him up to size, <laughs> that's when the guy in the bushes is gonna go, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. <laughs> anyway, my name's Tig, thanks a lot.